Pastor Carl here. Welcome to day 11 of our 40 day media fast. We're fasting media for 40 days because we want to put ourselves in a, in a position where we're spending more time with the Lord. Not only are we spending more time with the Lord, we want to use that time to hear from the Lord. Hear what the Lord is saying to us, about us, about our families, about our church, about our nation. And then we want to respond. We want to respond in prayer, both prayer that we hear from God and prayer that we cry out to the Lord. We want to pray, uh, Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want to remind ourselves and remind God that the thoughts that he has toward us are thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give us a future, a future, a future, and to give us hope. Well, today we're going to look at the book of Proverbs, chapter number four, verse number 20 through 22. So I'd like to direct your attention to Proverbs chapter four, verse 20. We'll be reading out the New King James Version and going to the book of Proverbs chapter four, verse 20. We find these words. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find it and health to all their flesh. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, more importantly, to the application of his word. The book of Proverbs is primarily believed to be written by Solomon. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Now, Solomon was not the only writer of the book of Proverbs. There were other writers that were identified. Lemuel, for example, is attributed for writing uh, Proverbs chapter number 31. But 1 Kings 4.32 lets us know the proverb that uh, Solomon spoke over 3,000 Proverbs. And so we have a number of those Proverbs recorded in this collection that we call the Proverbs, which have been blessed by the Spirit of God. Uh, and looking at uh, Proverbs, one of the uh, major themes is the uh, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and uh, passing that fear of the Lord, passing that wisdom, that understanding onto his children. So the beginning of Proverbs chapter number four, verse number one says, hear my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good advice. Do not forsake my law or my instruction. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. When I was my father's son, Solomon, his father would be, David, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother. This was when he was young. Uh, it, we know that David and Bathsheba had a child. That child died shortly after being born. But then the Lord blessed David and Bathsheba with another child. And he even said that child would be Israel's next king, and that was Solomon. And when it looks like there was a period of time that Solomon was the only child of David and Bathsheba, and as being the only child, he was given some special attention by David. He says in verse 5, he taught him to get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. David could say that because David was a man after God's own heart. And for a number of years, so was Solomon during his reign. It was only in the latter part of his reign that he allowed his heart to be turned away from the Lord, fully given to the Lord, and to beginning to uh, cater to the needs of his uh, wives and, and, and their desires. But here, he's speaking to his son, and he's giving his son advice about how to live as a wise man in a very evil word, world. And in talking about this, he says, uh, the word that I'm speaking to you is going to come to you through different gates. And he names three gates. And I'm going to suggest to you a fourth one. He begins by talking about, incline your ear to my sayings. Inclining the ear, it talks about the ear gate. And so when sometimes someone is speaking, if they're speaking softly, you tend to move your ear in their direction. You might even turn your ear toward them so that you can hear. 
But he also says, do not let them, that is words, depart from your eyes. I, whenever I hear that, I'm reminded of uh, Joshua. In Joshua chapter number six, uh, Joshua came to Jericho. And in Joshua six, it says, and Jericho was securely shut up. No one could go in, no one could go out. But the Lord said to Joshua, see, see, I have given Joshua in, oh, I've given Joshua, I have given Jericho into your hand. And he had to see it, even though he couldn't see it. He had to see the words that God shared with him as being more true than what his eyes naturally saw. See it, Joshua. See it, Joshua. Even when you're marching around the walls one time a day for six days, see that I've given you that city. And this, on the seventh day, seven times, see that I've given you that city. And we, through our ears and through our eyes, need to see, need to hear that what we hear and what we see might be deposited into our hearts. Because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter number four, verse 25, it says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of its spring, or verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of its spring, the issues of life. But the way that I get things into my heart are through my eyes and through my ears and they make it to my heart. But there's one other gate I want to suggest to you. And that's the very start where it says, give attention. You see, my ears can be working properly. My eyes can be working properly. Not like mine, but hopefully like yours, you get 20-20 vision. But you still may not hear and you still may not see. We can be talking to our children and, and, and we're looking right at them and, and, and we're telling them something. We know that there's nothing physically wrong with them. So when we're speaking to them, we know that their ears hear what it is that we're saying. Uh, when we give them a, uh, a, a picture of what we're saying, we know that their eyes see what it is that we're saying. But we can look at their face and we know they don't hear. They don't understand what it is that we're talking about. Or if they do understand it, they're so preoccupied with something else that it probably won't get done we probably won't see the results that we hope to see. And the same thing is true with us spiritually. The Lord could be talking and the Lord doesn't always, doesn't talk through audible voices most of the time. He talks to you and I. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. The Lord could be giving us pictures of what it is that he's saying. See, words paint pictures. And it was important for the picture that the Lord was painting with Joshua to not be removed. It was important for the picture that the Lord was painting with Joshua would not depart from his eyes. He would see that Jericho had been given to him. And the Lord is painting pictures with us. The Lord is speaking unto us. But I need to give him my attention. And the job of the world is to divide my attention to splinter my attention, to dilute my attention. And that's why in, in Romans 12, 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. And what do we renew the mind with? With the word. Saturate myself with the word so that I can easily pick out what is the word and what is not the word. What is of God, what is not of God. So I want to give attention to his word. I don't want to make it something that I do on the side. I don't want to make it something that I do while I'm doing other things because my attention will not be fully on hearing him through my ears or hearing him through my eyes. Most importantly, getting what he's saying down in my heart with all purity and with all righteousness. It's interesting that in Psalms 119, 111, Psalms 119, 11, it says, your word I have hidden in my heart 
that might not sin against you. And one of the uh, ploys of the enemy is to keep the word from getting into our heart by either taking away our attention or by not allowing us to hear or not allowing us to keep what we hear in our sight until it becomes real. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And sometimes they have to walk in faith until that which the Lord is telling me has been made alive, has come to fruition within my life. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 22, uh, reading out of the New Living Translation, it says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. What's at stake? It's life. Jesus came that we might have life and we might have it more abundantly. What's at stake? It's health. The leper asked Jesus, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus said he's willing. And so now we need to receive the word of healing that he's given unto us. Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. There is healing available to us if we could hear his word, if we would not allow it to depart from our eyes, if we would allow it to be deposited within our hearts. Let's pray. Father God, there is so much to pray about nowadays. Our world, not just our city, not just our country, but our world is in turmoil. We're in turmoil regarding this coronavirus, this pandemic. We've never had anything quite like this before. We were very confident of our technology, of our culture, of our laws, of our wisdom. We didn't think anything could bring it down. It has not yet been brought down, but I don't think we're quite so confident anymore. And the thing that's good about that is that we can recognize you as being the only Lord, the only God. As you made yourself known to Nebuchadnezzar, bringing him to his knees, making him a wild man, he got up and said, there is only one God, there's only one ruler, and that's you. So Lord, we acknowledge you as being God. We acknowledge you as being ruler. And we ask that you would forgive us, forgive us as a nation, forgive us as individuals. We were at once the, the beacon of freedom. We were at once the a beacon of liberty. We were at once the, 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 the beacon of the gospel. But our lights have become dim. They have been windowed over by our living, by the laws that we pass, the things that we now call legal, even want to call normal. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us for sort of poking our noses up at you and, and believing that we could live without you. We can't. We surrender. We repent. We confess our sins. We need you, Lord. And we don't know how to get back. And unless you make a way, unless you show a way, unless you, the way, the truth, and the life, come into this situation, and you, the Prince of Peace, bring peace, there will be no peace. But we believe your word. If your people are called by your name, will humble themselves and pray. We believe your word, the thoughts that you have to us are still thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us a future and a hope. 
we believe your word, that the effectual fervent prayer of righteous men and women avails much. So we cry out for our nation. We cry out for our homes. Those that are struggling with the coronavirus or any other sicknesses, oh Lord, and they're not able to get the treatment that they need or they're not able to, to experience healing. We declare healing in Jesus' name. You've already purchased it. And for those who believe in you, let them receive it. And for those who don't, Lord, we intercede for them right now. And we pray that you would heal that the world will know that Jesus still lives. He lives within his church and the Holy Spirit is real. And once he's come upon us, we have power, not just to speak your word, but to see your word come to pass. We pray for individual homes, particularly during this long shut-in. It was difficult for many we pray, Lord, that you would be the difference. We thank you for your love and your word. We pray for our leaders. Lord, we should pity our leaders. No one knows how to get out of the mess we've created. There is not a mind on this earth that's smart enough to do that. But you can. You can, Lord Jesus. So speak, lead, even if you have to go over what it is we think should be done, you do what you need, what you know needs to be done. We give you, we give our will over to you. Not my will, but yours be done. We thank you that even during these dark days, you, we do see you arising and shining over us. And we do see glimpses of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Continue to show your might, your power, your grace, your mercy, your compassion, and your love. And let us be oracles, heralders of the goodness of our God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hey, thanks for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And by the way, if you're interested in starting a house church, whether under The Rock, a four-square church, or under Solid Lives, our global discipleship ministry, then go to one of those websites and hit house churches. Go to therock.com for The Rock and solidlives.com for Solid Lives. We'd love to partner with you to start a house church and to advance the kingdom of God together.